Hey guys and welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you 15 locations for you to go and take photos the next time you are in Prague. So of these locations, 14 of which I visited and one I didn't and that's purely because I didn't know it was there um, until afterwards uh, and I realised that I'd made my mistake. So let's start going through all of these 15 now. Uh, to clarify, I was in Prague for 48 hours um, and I managed to hit all of these locations. I had no issues at all um, and one thing that I would highly highly recommend is that you get up early when you want to go to some of these locations um, it's pretty much just so different getting there first thing in the morning I think I was up at around 6 30 in the morning to actually get to some of these locations because there was literally nobody there um, and it was absolutely beautiful so yeah let's jump straight into these so number one is Petrin Hill and Tower and the reason why I mention these is because from Petrin Hill and Petrin Tower you can get a lovely view of the entire of Prague. You can see the entirety of the city and it is absolutely gorgeous from up there. Um, I would highly recommend that you can essentially go to up to Petrin Hill and that is absolutely free. Well, you have to get the trout out there, or you can walk if, if that's what you want to do. Um, but you can also go up this viewing tower as well. Um, I can't remember the price off the top of my head, but it is not that expensive. I think it's around 125 Czech crown. Um, so yeah, very, not very expensive as far as I can remember. Um, but from up here, you can get some lovely views of the city. If you have a telephoto lens, you can definitely make the most of it. Um, I've got some lovely shots on my telephoto lens and I would highly recommend going up here too. Too. It is also where I flew my drone as well and I managed to get this lovely panoramic shot that you can see here on my desktop background. Um, unfortunately due to the limits of the Mavic Mini it is a JPEG and it didn't come out particularly well when you blow it up on 4K monitors. But still the photo is, is lovely um, when you scale it down and don't yeah, try and completely ruin the image. Okay, so number two is Dancing House. Now, uh, this was recommended to me by my sister who visited Prague uh, earlier on in the year. Um, and essentially, this place is absolutely amazing in terms of like modern architecture. She wasn't the biggest fan of it, but because of its abstract and modern architecture, I really, really wanted to visit it. Um, and yeah, I think that there was, it was raining like a few hours before I managed to get there as well. So we had some really nice reflections and I managed to get this lovely reflective shot as well. Um, and yeah, it's definitely something that I wouldn't spend too long there. It's literally just a building for you to look at. Um, and that's it. There's no, there's nothing else you can, I think you may be able to go inside, but to be honest with you, the, the view is of the building itself. A few moments later. All right, and so the next place I want to talk about is the Franz Kafka, um, and this is essentially a 3D moving sculpture uh, within Prague, which I genuinely didn't know was there, and I'm very, very happy that I uh, essentially literally just stumbled upon it uh, when trying to look for food. Um, and this thing is incredibly unique. Um, essentially, it because it's consistently moving and the light is always changing and stuff like that, it can make for some very, very interesting photography. Um, and yeah, I think it's somewhere that you could probably spend a decent amount of time. Okay, so the next location is the Powder Tower. Now this is the one place that I didn't actually take photos of because I didn't know it was there. I had no idea. Uh, but when uh, looking up essentially research to make this video, I actually found out that it was there. Uh, so I would highly recommend going to try and take some photos of this. It is essentially a very similar looking tower to the tower uh, on the Charles's Bridge, which I will mention later. Um, and yeah, it's just a lovely, lovely tower and I'm afraid that I just didn't manage to take photos of it, I'm afraid, but I would definitely recommend checking it out. I feel like this should have been number one on my list, but I'm not numbering these in terms of what you should and shouldn't see. These are just in complete random order. Uh, but this is the Charles Bridge and essentially this bridge is absolutely lovely. It's one of the main reasons why you would want to visit Prague. It's from the year four or something ridiculous. No, not the year four, but it's been around since I want to say the medieval times or something like that. Um, and it is an absolutely beautiful bridge. If you watch uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, there's a scene on the St. Charles' Bridge as well, um, so you may recognize it from that too. But yes, this bridge, I would highly recommend getting up early um, and essentially going here then because there is barely anyone on this bridge um, and you have it all to yourself, um, especially when you catch the, the sunrise, which will, if you're looking um, towards the center of Prague, 
uh, the sun will actually rise um, on your it'll rise on your right <laughs> it'll rise on your right and you should hopefully get some really really nice lighting in for for your photos as well uh, yeah I've got so many nice photos from St Charles's Bridge uh, I keep calling it St Charles's Bridge it's called Charles Bridge you will get some lovely photos from Charles Bridge uh, and yeah it, it is absolutely lovely Okay, so the next one I have a massive problem pronouncing correctly, but it is called the Costel Stevejo Yili. I'm sorry if you're Czech and you're watching this. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but essentially this is an absolutely gorgeous uh, church, which is slap bang in the middle of Prague. Um, and it's just, yeah, the, the architecture and the detail inside of the church is absolutely phenomenal and I would highly recommend checking this one out too. The next one is the Clementinium and this is essentially um, one of the, th the key features about this is that it has like this ridiculously old library in there um, which is just absolutely gorgeous. We were told that we couldn't take flash photography or anything like that. They literally have the lights on timers because essentially the light obviously degrades the books and they're trying to preserve all of the books. Um, but uh, luckily the tour guide, I hope I'm not dobbing him in, uh, but the tour guide essentially just said as long as you don't use flash photography you can get one or two photos. Uh, and I managed to, to take one of these as well. Um, so I think the tour is around 300 Czech crown, um, but I would say fully worth it. Um, the tour guide does actually do a very good job of explaining everything. Um, and you are actually able to go up into one of the old towers as well and you have beautiful views of the city from up there as well. Um, so I would highly, highly recommend uh, going up there. It is absolutely great. And also just interesting as well. I know obviously this is the, <laughs> the focus of this video is photography, but you also want to go there and enjoy yourself. So yeah, I would highly, highly recommend it just purely for, for being a bit of a tourist as well. So yeah. All right, so the next place I want to mention is the Old Town Hall. Uh, and there's a few reasons for this. Um, it is on the main square in Prague. Um, and so from here, you can get some lovely views um, out of the rest of the city. Um, and yeah, it's, it's somewhere again, I would recommend getting very, very early. I got there at nine o'clock on the dot as it opened and I was the first person in there. Uh, I was up there for around 20 minutes, just like I was too, so relaxed, walking around, snapping photos, there was nobody in my way, uh, the lighting was gorgeous, the square was mostly clear, um, I did manage to take some nice photos and I, I edited some people out, but I got some nice photos of the square reasonably quiet. But yeah, and then also there are some lovely windows within the, within the Old Town Hall Tower as well uh, that you can actually view out of too. Um, and there's also a really, really nice elevator as well. You can take the elevator up or down, uh, but I would highly recommend taking the elevator up. Uh, they're not stairs, it's actually a ramp which goes all the way up, but going down and it's a lot easier. So I'd recommend taking the elevator up, taking your lovely photos and then walking down. But it has this really, really lovely elevator shaft which you can essentially, if you get on almost the second sort of ramp before you actually leave the tower. Uh, you can look up and you can get a lovely shot like this. And yeah, I'd, I'd highly, highly recommend checking this one out. So this is directly connected to the Old Town Square, which is essentially where you can see this iconic building um, and a few bits and pieces as well. The buildings around here are absolutely lovely. It's essentially one of the main squares in Prague. Um, a lot of tourists, uh, if you fancy like just like you want to escape from the hustle and bustle as well, um, maybe you just need to recharge. There is actually a Starbucks here. Um, I'm mentioning that purely for your well-being. But yeah, you can get some lovely photos from here. There is also this uh, company which uh, runs old uh, town cars and stuff like that around Prague as well. So you can get some lovely shots of those if that's what you're into. If you're into car photography at all, uh, then go and check those out as well. Um, again, it was raining when I went, so I managed to get a lovely reflection shot like this. It's somewhere that's uh, also probably pretty good for street photography as well, if you want to get some, some candid photos of people too. Um, yeah, although do be warned, the later on in the day, the busier this place will get. Um, so yeah, again, if you're looking to visit, please do think about going early. Okay, so the next place that is on the list is number 10, and that is Naplavka. Um, again, sorry if I'm butchering the name, but this is essentially a spot where you can see St. Charles's Bridge from. It's a couple of minutes away, really, really easy to get to. 
but uh, you'll know that you're going in the right place or you'll know that you're in the right place if you see a hell of a lot of swans knocking around uh, because essentially this is where all the swans stop um, I don't know why, it just is. Uh, presumably people go down there to feed them, but you can get some lovely shots with swans in the foreground and St. Charles's Bridge in the background and maybe if you go there at sunset, um, you might be able to get some lovely sunsets as well, but I imagine that it would be pretty good for sunrise too. I think I was there around 10, 11 a.m. in the morning, I think. Um, which obviously isn't the best for lighting, but I still think I've got some fantastic shots as well. I would highly recommend it, um, and yeah, just a stone's throw away from Charles's Bridge. The next one is the Lesser Town Bridge Tower. Now this one I visited uh, and mostly took photos of at night. I don't know why I didn't take that many photos during the day, but it is what it is. And essentially this tower is very similar to the tower which is attached to Charles Bridge. Um, but yeah, it's an absolutely lovely tower um, and something which you can explore with the area around. I managed to get this lovely shot of somebody buying something from a shop. Um, and just, yeah, the lighting there was really, really lovely. Um, and yeah, there was a lot of like old cobbled streets and stuff like that. There's a lot of chain link like rails and stuff like that. So you can be quite creative with, with the photography that you actually do here. So the next one is St. Vitus Cathedral. Now, essentially, if you're going from Charles Bridge towards the uh, Lesser Town Bridge Tower and you go further up the hill, you will get to the Prague Castle. Now, one of the main features of this castle, not only uh, is the cathedral itself which you can see some photos of here um, but also the views from there are absolutely amazing um, and if you have enjoyed the views in Petron Hill or maybe you don't have time to go to Petron Hill and you only have time to go to Prague Castle um, or the cathedral itself um, then you can definitely get some lovely views of the city from here and they are yeah highly highly recommended views as well um, and the other bits as well is that there are viewing points around as well um, which you can sort of stop off at um, and have a look over the city too. Um, I would be aware as well they, they do search bags um, when you're going into the like main part of the castle which is to be expected because it's a very busy area um, but just to prepare you in case you need to um, uh, make sure you're all set up ready to go because I went through and it was an absolute faff um, because I was packing things and like that he like he asked to see all of my camera gear and stuff like that um, he was also saying essentially like don't take the because I have my drone in my bag don't take the drone up in here there were signs everywhere telling people not to not to use drones so presumably there's a horror story for the reasons uh, they have those uh, those signs up there so please um, yeah be be prepared but yeah you can get some lovely lovely photos from here so when you fancy a walk back from Prague Castle or the Cathedral, um, I would highly recommend taking these stairs, um, which are called Zam Zamakishol Zam Zamakisholdi. I'm so sorry if you're Czech and watching this. I, I would love to pronounce uh, the words correctly. Uh, but essentially, these are some steps which lead up to the castle or down to the city, depending on which way you're going. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the high walls um, and the high buildings really give you a little bit of a closed in feeling and also tunnel vision as a photographer as well um, and you can get some really really nice shots here you can see this is probably one of my favorite shots I've ever taken um, this is very early in the morning I think maybe around eight o'clock in the morning I believe um, and it's just a man walking his dog um, he actually like I presume he trained the dog to stop wait and then he would call the dog. And literally, I just essentially was watching him do this while I was taking photos of other bits and pieces, or trying to at the very least. And yeah, I managed to snap uh, a lovely shot like this one. Um, so yeah, and it adds a little bit of a human touch to the images as well. Um, so yeah, I'd highly recommend trying, not copying the images, um, but uh, trying to visit this location and doing something a bit different. I traveled on my own. If you travel with uh, a partner or family or whatever or something like that, then try and take photos of them along these stairs. Um, but yeah, it's definitely somewhere that you should visit, especially if you're literally going up to the castle or coming back down. Do not take some sort of lift or taxi or anything like that. It's a 20 minute walk uh, uphill and probably 15 minutes down because it's a lot quicker. Um, yeah, you do not need to uh, get like any sort of vehicle trip up there at all. Alrighty, so the next place is the Prague Metronome, and this is uh, probably the most northern place uh, on the on the list, um, and the second to last as well, actually. 
Um, and this place is where I put up the drone. It was one of literally, like I said, two places that I could put up the drone. Um, and yeah, this place, you've got some nice, almost like an S curve of the river um, uh, leading out towards uh, the like center of Prague, towards Charles Bridge. You can see all of the bridges from up here. Um, I imagine a sunrise here would be absolutely lovely. Um, and yeah, it was it was very very nice up there too. Um, I managed to get this drone video, which you can see here. Um, I did have one person look at me a bit funny, as you usually get with with drones. Um, but yeah, it wasn't really a problem. I didn't get my camera out that much here because I was purely focused on trying to get some drone content. Uh, because essentially, like I said, it was one of two places I could actually get the drone up. But yeah, I would highly recommend checking this place out. And the last place that I want to mention is just the Prague streets themselves. If you wander around the beautiful and picturesque Prague streets um, around between the Town Hall and Charles Bridge, do not go on the main streets because they are so, so busy. Just go off, like, just take a side street or something like that, please, because there are so many beautiful streets in and around Prague. You can definitely um, get some lovely, lovely photos there. Um, and yeah, like, if you want to take pictures of loads of people, fine, um, but you will find some, some stuff which nobody else on the main streets will see. Um, so yeah, I'd highly, highly recommend that. All right, so those are 15 locations, which hopefully the next time you visit Prague, you will be able to go and snap some great photos there. Or if you've never been to Prague, then there's 15 places you can go. Uh, so like I said, I was not there for that long, 48 hours, and that does not include like flights or anything like that. Um, so there was definitely more there to discover. Um, if there's a place that you think I missed, please let me know down below in the comments. Um, and yeah, I, I would highly recommend a trip to Prague. It's pretty cheap. Um, the beer there is lovely, so I've been told I don't drink beer. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a very lovely place. See you in the next one. Oh, and enjoy your visit to Prague. <laughs> enjoy. Mm -hmm.